Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and today we're going to learn about directional derivatives. So the idea here is, imagine you've got a two-variable function. We've already learned how to take partial derivatives of these functions, and those partial derivatives tell you how quickly it's increasing or decreasing in the x direction and in the y direction. But what if you're going in any of the other directions, right? Well, if you're going between the x and y directions, how quickly are you going up or down? Or in any of the other directions, right? There are infinitely many different directions that you can walk along that surface on. What are the slopes or the derivatives in those directions? Well, that's what we're going to learn about today. Okay, so before we can get to that, though, we've got to introduce something new. We've got to introduce something called the gradient, which is going to be the main workhorse for actually letting us compute directional derivatives toward the end of this lecture. Okay, so what's the gradient of a function? What it is, is, well, it's built off of the function's partial derivatives. So just to remind you, the partial derivatives, it's just you treat all of the variables except for one as constants and take the derivative with respect to that variable. So two variable function, for example, f of x and y, that's a function of two variables. So it has two partial derivatives because there are two variables. You can take the derivative with respect to x or you can take the derivative with respect to y. Okay, if you've got a function of three variables, now you're gonna have three partial derivatives, del g by del x, del g by del y, and del g by del z. Okay, and in, I mean, in general, if you've got a function of n variables, you're gonna have n partial derivatives, okay? You can take the derivative with respect to the first variable, second variable, or whichever variable you like up to the last variable. Okay, well, the gradient, it's the vector that you get if you just take all of these partial derivatives and throw them in a vector, okay? So again, if we go back to this two variable function, f of x, y, that's a function of two variables. Its gradient, therefore, is gonna have two entries in it. It's gonna be a two dimensional vector. And those two entries are just gonna be the partial derivatives. So the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. And if you have a function with more variables, of more input variables, your, your gradient is similarly gonna just be larger. It's gonna have more entries. It's gonna live in a higher dimensional space. So if you have a function of three variables, g of x, y, and z, well, now its gradient is gonna have three entries, the dr partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and partial derivative with respect to z are its three entries, okay? And these gradient vectors, they're functions of x, y, and z as well, right? Okay, like remember these partial derivatives, so all of these guys, you can plug x, y, and if relevant, z into them, and then those will give you numeric vectors. But as is, these depend on all of the input variables as well. Okay, so the name that we give to the sort of vector-valued function is the gradient, and we denote it like this. This sort of, uh, this is called a nabla symbol. It's like an upside-down delta, okay? And that's the notation for gradient. Okay, so we'll see in a minute why we actually care about the gradient, but first, let's do an example. Let's compute the gradient of some function, and, you know, we'll just start off with a two-variable function to keep it simple. Okay, so what is the gradient of this function here, xy minus x squared, all divided by 1 plus x squared? So over here on the left, we've just got a plot of this function, and I'm just going to rotate it around a little bit so that you can get your bearings a little bit and hopefully visualize what's going on with this function. Okay, so, I don't know, got some mountains and valleys all over the place, and it looks something like that. Okay, so how do we compute the gradient? Well, you just compute the two partial derivatives, derivative with respect to x and derivative with respect to y, and then throw them in a vector, okay? So if you already know how to compute partial derivatives, computing the gradient is trivial. You just write the partial derivatives next to each other or on top of each other. Okay, so let's start off with the x partial derivative. For this one, we're gonna have to use the quotient rule. And the reason for that is, right, we've got a fraction here and there are x's both on the top and bottom of that fraction, okay? So we just identify what's the top piece, what's the bottom piece, and then use our quotient rule, right? It's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all divided by the bottom squared. So that's all I'm doing there. I'm using the quotient rule, and now I'm just gonna simplify as much as I can. So I just multiply out all those brackets on the top and collect like terms and simplify the top as much as I can. I'm not gonna bother expanding out the bottom though, okay? I'm just gonna leave that like that. Okay, so that's my x partial derivative. Now for my y partial derivative, fortunately this works out a lot easier. At first you might think that you have to use the quotient rule, and you can use the quotient rule if you like, you, nothing will go wrong, but you don't have to, it's overkill. And the reason for this is there's no y's in the denominator, right? The only y's are on the top. So this one plus x squared in the denominator, that's a constant, okay? So think of this instead as you've got one fraction, x, y over this, minus another fraction, x squared over that, and that second fraction is a constant and the x over one, one plus x squared, that's also a constant. When you take the derivative of this, this term goes away and you're just left with 
this, because that whole thing's a constant. It's just a constant times y. Okay, so you're just left with x over 1 plus x squared as your y partial derivative. Or you can use the quotient rule, but there are going to be a lot of zeros everywhere, and it'll simplify down, and you'll waste a lot of time. Okay, so those are your partial derivatives. Now, to create the gradient, all you do is you take these two partial derivatives, and you throw them into a vector. Okay, so we're just going to put them in, the, in those two slots of a vector, and so that's our answer. I just copied down the formulas. That's what our gradient is. Okay, great. Now that we know how to compute the gradient, what can we do with it? Well, we can compute directional derivatives. This is the whole point of the gradient. Okay, so yeah, just to remind you, partial derivatives, they tell us the slope in the x and y directions. Okay, so it's something like this. Okay, so there I've drawn on sort of the x direction and it's sort of pointing down a little bit because if you do compute the, the par x partial derivative at this point, you know, this point one, one, you're gonna find that the x partial derivative is slightly negative. So you're gonna get the the slope is, you know, the arrow there, it's pointing down a little bit. If you walk in this direction, in the x direction from one, one, you're gonna go down a bit. Whereas if you compute the y partial, then you're gonna find at, you know, at the same spot, you're walking up a little bit. So this time you're gonna get an arrow going up that way a little bit. So your x partial is a little negative, your y partial is a little positive. You've got different slopes in the different directions. Okay, but what about all the other directions? Okay, what if we want to know the slope or the derivative in some other direction? There are lots of different ways that I could walk. I could walk straight, you know, back towards the origin from 1, 1, okay? Or I could walk sort of steeper up the hill, right? Here, I mean, I'm going sort of along with the hill. Here, I'm going up the hill, okay? I'm trying to find its peak. Okay, what about those directions? What are the slopes in those directions or in any other direction? Well, the answer is provided by something called the directional derivative. So we say that the derivative of f in the direction of some unit vector, okay? So that's all that this u is here. It's some unit vector, and that's a unit vector that specifies the direction that you want to walk in, okay? That's the direction that you're computing the slope in, okay? And what it is, the derivative in that direction, so first off, left side is notation here, okay? So we just say del f by del u, that means the derivative in the u direction, just like del f by del x means derivative in the x direction, and del f by del y means derivative in the y direction, okay? Del f by del u means derivative in the u direction, okay? And then the right-hand side tells us how to compute it. The way that you compute it is you take the gradient, which we just learned how to compute, and you dot product it with this unit vector who, that specifies the direction. Okay, so the computation is really, really easy, actually. Once you, are, once you know how to find partial derivatives, you just stick them in a vector, call it the gradient, and then compute a dot product. And dot product is just about the easiest vector operation you can do, right? All right, so before we do an example, I should mention that this really is a theorem. This isn't the definition of the directional derivative. This is a theorem, right, that tells us how to compute it. The way you define the directional derivative is via a limit as h goes to zero, just like we defined all of our other derivatives, okay? It's defined via a limit, and then there's a theorem that says, oh, good, we don't have to use limits to compute it. We can actually just compute it via gradients and dot products, okay, things we already know. As a bit of a sanity check, it's a good idea to consider what happens if the unit vector that we use is the one that points along the x-axis. In other words, if it's the unit vector 1, 0. Okay? And, well, if we just plug into this formula, if u is the unit vector 1, 0, then what happens when we compute this dot product is it just picks off the first entry of the gradient. And what is the first entry of the gradient? Well, it's the x partial derivative. Okay, so the directional derivative in the direction of 1, 0 is the x partial derivative. And that's good. That makes sense, right? Because we have the same interpretation for the x partial derivative as we do for the directional derivative in that direction, right? They're both measuring the, the rate of change in the x direction. So that makes sense. That's good. Something, something right is going on here, okay? So they're both measuring sort of how far down is that arrow pointing, Okay, and similarly, similarly, to capture the y partial derivative, you've just got to take the unit vector 0, 1, right? The, the unit vector pointing in the y direction now. Because again, in this dot product, all that'll do is now it's going to pick off the second entry of the gradient and forget entirely about the first entry. In other words, it's going to pick off the y partial derivative. It's going to measure the slope in the y direction. Okay, but the really nice thing is we have a whole bunch of freedom in how u points now, right? We can point u not just in the x or y direction, we can point it in any other direction and compute a slope in that direction as well. Okay, so let's start off now with an example where we point u directly over to the left there. In other words, let's point it back towards the origin.
Okay, so here, same function that we've already been working with, xy minus x squared over one plus x squared. And we're gonna be looking again at the same point here. We're gonna be looking at the point one, one. And now the direction that we have in mind though, is gonna be this one. It's gonna be, I'm gonna be pointing left one unit in the x direction, left one unit in the y direction, or I guess down one unit in the y direction, I don't know, backwards one unit in the y direction. But then I've gotta be a little bit careful. U always has to be a unit vector, okay? It has to have length one, in other words. Okay, so that's what the one over root two is doing here. Okay, it's just this vector minus one minus one divided by its length, divided by root two, or length or magnitude. Okay, so with all of those pieces in place, now we can compute the slope in this direction, okay? So the way you compute it is you just compute the gradient, plug in one, one, plug in the point you're interested in, and dot product it with the direction vector, okay? So let's start off, we've computed the gradient, but we haven't plugged one, one into it yet, okay? So let's plug one, one into it. So I'm just gonna take these formulas here and plug in x equals one and y equals one, and when I do that, what I get is the first entry is gonna be minus a half, the second entry is gonna be one half. Okay, so that's my gradient at one, one. And now I just take its dot product with this unit vector here. Okay, so the only weird thing that I've done here is, I mean, this one over root two used to be in front of the U piece. I've just pulled it out in front, in front of the whole thing. You can pull scalars out in front of dot products. There's no problem there. Okay, and now you just compute that dot product. Still the one over root two is out in front of it. And then you just get minus one half with this minus one gives me plus one half and plus one half with this minus one gives me minus one half, and you add those guys up, and you just get zero as your directional derivative in that direction, okay? In other words, if you look directly that way, if you look back towards the origin, you're not going up or down, it's just flat, which, I mean, it kinda looks like what our picture's indicating here, right? The, the slope in that direction is zero, it's flat in that direction. Okay, let's do another example. All I've changed here now is, now U is pointing in the direction, x direction minus one, y direction plus one, okay? So I've, I've sort of rotated around 90 degrees. It used to be minus one, minus one, now it's minus one plus one, okay? But at the same point and the same function, okay? Well, this is kind of a trick question because remember what I said, u always has to be a unit vector. It always has to have length one, okay? So before I can solve this problem, I've got to rescale u so that's a unit vector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick a one over root two in front of it. Okay, so now it's a unit vector. So now I can actually do my computation. Okay, and yeah, I mean, the direction that I'm pointing, it's sort of up this way now in between the X and Y directions, sort of off to the side. Okay, so how do I compute this? Well, now the computation is the exact same that we did before. It's just the gradient dotted with the new direction. Okay, so the gradient is the exact same that it was before because I did not change the point that I'm at. I'm still at the point one, one. So this guy here, this minus one half plus one half, that's still the gradient. The only thing that changed is now my u vector is different. So this piece is different. Okay, and you compute the dot product. This time, I mean, still one over root two out in front of everything. This time, minus one half dotted with one, that's plus one half, and then plus one half times one is gonna be plus one half this time. So now when you do this computation, you're gonna get an answer of one over root two. So if you walk in this direction, your slope is one over root two. So it's kind of positive now. And, and actually it's even bigger than the slope in the X or the Y directions, okay? So if you walk in the Y direction, you're walking up a little bit. If you walk in this new direction though, you're walking up more, you're walking up more steeply. You're going a bit more quickly to the top, top of this hill that we see here. Okay, so that's it for directional derivatives and the gradient. What we're gonna do next class is we're gonna see that we can use these tools to answer the question of, well, if I'm at a particular point, what is the steepest direction that I can walk in? In other words, how can I get to the top of the nearest hill as quickly as possible or the bottom of the nearest valley? All right, so I'll see you next class for that.